So students, today uh, what we're going to do in this lecture is learn about um, the enamine ray of alkylating the alpha carbon. What you learned in previous lectures was uh, the acidity of the alpha hydrogen and how we can actually use an acid or base to form an enol. Um, <coughs> you also learned how we can form the enolate ion using an a base such as hydroxide, um, but you get a full conversion of the in, uh, of the ketone to the enolate ion if you use a, a base such as lithium diisopropyl amide, LDA for short, and then you convert um, the ketone in all of the ketone gets converted to the enolate ion. Um, this is much better to do an alkylation reaction. Uh, you saw that bromination can be done at the upper carbon by using a base such as hydroxide ion. Um, <coughs> and the alkylation is done using a stronger base such as lithium diisopropyl amide or LDA um, to do the alkylation at the upper carbon. Today, what I'm going to show you is how to um, do an alkylation or an insulation at the upper carbon using the same principle but not uh, forming the enolate ion, but rather forming an enamine. And I'm going to show you how this is done today with a mechanism so that you're able to do this reaction. So what we're going to do now is start with the reaction that you've learned previously. And I'm going to use um, cyclohexanone as an example. So that is the structure of cyclohexanone. And then what we're going to do is take that cyclohexanone and treat that with a secondary amine. So I'm going to add a secondary amine. I'm going to choose this secondary amine, pyrrolidine. And we've learned that if I react this ketone with the secondary amine, we've learned this reaction previously with a trace amount of acid. What happens is that you form an enamine. So this is the cyclohexanone ring, and that gives you the en amine that you now form. So this enamine now is the intermediate that we're going to use in the uh, synthesis of the alpha alkylated ketone. So once we form this, we can now proceed with our reaction. So let's look at what happens once that is formed. I can now take an alkyl halide I'll choose uh, something like methyl bromide and with methyl bromide we can get an SN2 reaction and I'll put the lone pair on my nitrogen here to start the reaction so the lone pair goes toward that bond. You notice that my arrow points to the nitrogen carbon bond because that's where the this lone pair of electrons is going to sit here as a pi pair of electrons. And this pi electrons now is going to act as a nucleophile and go toward the carbon in methyl bromide. The carbon bromine bond is then going to break, and both of the electrons of the carbon bromine bond is now going to reside in bromine, which is fine. And what we do get is another intermediate. And let's see what happens in this reaction. The cyclohexane ring is intact. But now we have a double bond between nitrogen and carbon. Let's finish off the structure there. You notice that I've given away this lone pair. So this nitrogen now is electron deficient, one electron deficient. 
which means that that nitrogen gets a positive charge. If I count the electrons around nitrogen, it's 1, 2, 3, 4. Remember, nitrogen has 5 electrons around it. So because there's one electron short, that uh, nitrogen gets a positive charge. And I've used this pi curve electrons and formed a bond between this carbon atom, the alpha carbon, and the carbon of the methyl group. So I formed a bond there with the three hydrogens on it. And the methyl group has now gone off as the bromide ion. And once that happens, I've got this imidium intermediate. And in, once that imidium intermediate is formed, all we have to do now is hydrolyze this. It's another reaction that you've learned before. I use some acid and water, and I hydrolyze this imidium ion to the ketone. This reaction you have learned before. And you see that the product that we get from this reaction is the same as if we alkylated it via the enolate ion. So this alkylation takes place via an enone intermediate. And we get the same product as if we had the following reaction. If I had a ketone and I used LDA with THF solvent, I would have formed the enolate ion, reacted that with methyl bromide, and by the same sort of mechanism we saw previously, we also formed the alpha alkylated ketone. So we've got two ways of now making the same molecule, one via an enone intermediate by reacting it with a secondary amine first, then producing the aluminium ion hydrolyzing that to the alpha alkylated ketone. And the first way you learned previously was using a strong base such as lithium diisopropyl amide with this ketone forming the enolate ion and then uh, an SN2 substitution with a, um, a methyl halide such as methyl bromide to give you the alkylated ketone. Remember that we don't use a base such as hydroxide ion in this case. And the reason for that is that a side reaction would occur with methyl bromide will react with your hydroxide ion and you would form methanol as a side product in this reaction. So we tend not to use the hydroxide base but rather the lithium diisopropyl amide base. We call that the lithium diisopropyl amide ion is the structures like this and this is a bulky base so it would take off an alpha hydrogen rather than react, uh, react directly with the carbonyl carbon of the uh, ketone. So this is a strong base, but a poor nucleophile, which would abstract this alpha hydrogen. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this lecture, and uh, I'm looking forward to the next one.